Good morning. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I hope that you're ready to grow. We're going to start with the Word of God this morning. It's Matthew 5, verse 6, and it says this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. The key to growth in God is hunger. Hunger. Say it with me. Hunger. Psalm 61, 3 says, O oh God, you are my God, and earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Psalm 143, 6 says, I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. That's thirsty. That's hungry. Whether you have a call of God on your life or you don't, you need hunger or you will not grow. So the question I put to you this morning is, do you want to learn? Do you want to grow? Do you want to develop a hunger, a real thirst and a hunger and a desire for the Word of God? You cannot grow in God beyond your knowledge of the Word. You will derail. It is of a necessity that you know that you hunger and you're willing to pay a price for the Word of God. Developing character is your job and there's a price to pay. The Word of God is absolutely vital in your life. Mark 4, 1 through 11 is the story of Jesus in the wilderness. And remember how he defeated Satan who tempted and tried him. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Now Jesus Christ is and was the Word of God and yet he spoke the written Word of God and defeated the enemy. That should be our example and that is what we also must do. But if we don't have the Word in us, we cannot do that. So we have to have a passion. We have to have a desire. We have to have a thirst. Especially you youngsters out there, if there are any watching, if you're not all old like me, and even if you are old like me, make sure that you listen to, you talk to, you ask questions of those who have gone before you, those who have more maturity in the Word, those who've paid a price to have the Word of the Lord resident and big in, their, in them. Your pastors, honor them, love them, because their business is the welfare of your very soul. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 12 says, Know them who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. I'm going to read a passage of scripture to you out of uh, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 in the Passion Translation and see if it rings true to you today. This is Paul speaking to his son in the faith, Timothy. You need to be aware that in the final days, the culture of society will become extremely fierce and difficult for the people of God. People will be self-centered lovers of themselves and obsessed with money. They will boast of great things as they strut around in their arrogant pride and mock all that is right. They will ignore their own families. They will be ungrateful and ungodly. They will become addicted to hateful and malicious slander, slaves to their desires. They will be ferocious belligerent haters of what is good and right. With brutal treachery, they will act without restraint, bigoted and wrapped in clouds of their conceit. They will find their desire in the pleasures of this world more than the pleasures of loving God. They may pretend to have a respect for God, but in reality, they want nothing to do with God's power. Paul tells Timothy, stay away from people like these. Then when we go down to verse 10, it says, But you, Timothy, have closely followed my example in the truth that I've imparted to you. You have modeled your life after the love and endurance I've demonstrated in my ministry by not giving up. The faith I have, you now have. What I have hungered for in life now has become your longing as well. The patience I have with others, you now demonstrate. And verse 14, Yet you must continue to advance in strength with the truth wrapped around your heart being assured by God that he's the one who has truly taught you all these things. Paul is admonishing and imploring Timothy to continue to grow, to follow those who have gone before him, to learn, to grow, to never let go of the hunger for God. Now, next time we're gonna start on some ways that you can develop hunger. You say, how do I develop a hunger for the word? We're gonna talk about that because it is vital, saints, because this is the culture in which we live, that which I just read to you. You need solid footing, and the only solid footing is the Word of God. Have a delightful day. Thank you.